Hello and a very good morning. You're watching the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Pereira. Here are this morning's headlines. India puts conditions for talks with Pakistan on Kashmir, says interested only in result-oriented dialogue, asks Pakistan to stop being in denial about support to cross-border terrorism. Chief Minister Mehbooba Mufti to meet Prime Minister over situation in Kashmir Valley. Another youth killed in violence on Friday, taking the death toll in the unrest so far to 67. Defence Minister says Scorpion data leak not a big worry. This says Whistleblower says he will submit data disk to Australian government. Flood situation continues to remain grim in several states in North India. 14 more deaths reported in Bihar, rivers in Spate in Uttar Pradesh and West Bengal. And Prime Minister announces task force for comprehensive action plan for the next three Olympics decision after India's poor showing at the Rio Games. Well, Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister Mehbooba Mufti will meet Prime Minister Narendra Modi to discuss the situation in the state. This comes as another youth was killed in fresh clashes on Friday. India has also toughened its stand on talks with Pakistan, saying that Islamabad should stop being in denial of its support of cross-border terrorism. India also put conditions for talks with Pakistan on the mat. Here's more. Chief Minister Mehbooba Mufti will call on Prime Minister Narendra Modi in Delhi to discuss the situation in the valley. This is the first meeting between the two leaders since the violence broke out in the valley following the killing of Hezbollah militant Burhan Bani in July. The meeting also comes soon after Home Minister Rajnath Singh's two-day visit to the valley. The CM's Delhi visit comes as another youth was killed and several others injured in fresh clashes in Rajpura area in Pulwama district. With this casualty, the total death toll in the ongoing 49-day unrest has reached 67. On the diplomatic front, India put conditions for talks with Pakistan, with the Foreign Secretary asking Islamabad to stop being in denial mode regarding its support to cross-border terrorism. Foreign Secretary further made it explicit that the agenda before India and Pakistan today is clearly to put an end to cross-border terrorism and incitement to violence from Pakistan. Foreign Secretary conveyed his readiness to be available to engage any time at mutual convenience on these issues. However, he mentioned that justifying terrorism and interference in the internal affairs of India is hardly a serious basis for a result-oriented dialogue. India has also emphasized that it wants a result-oriented dialogue on the matter. In his letter dated August 24, Foreign Secretary has conveyed that the government of India seeks a result-oriented dialogue on the subject. As Pakistan is aware, the intended result at issue is the early vacation by Pakistan of its illegal occupation. Foreign Secretary has reiterated that the basis for further discussions are the Simla Agreement of 1972, the Lahore Declaration of 1999 and the Joint Statement of 2004. Pakistan has said it regrets India's virtual rejection of its proposal for talks, but made yet another attempt to internationalize the issue with the advisor to Prime Minister Sartaj Aziz, briefing ambassadors of the permanent members of the UN Security Council and the European Union in Islamabad about what it claims are human rights violations in Kashmir. Back home, an all-party parliamentary delegation is likely to visit Jammu and Kashmir in the first week of September and meet a cross-section of people. This after opposition parties pressed for the need to take all parties on board over the matter. Apart from the loss of lives, Kashmir's economy has suffered a loss of over 6,000 crore rupees in the ongoing unrest as business activities have been severely hit. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, the 19th SARC summit will be held in Islamabad on November 9th and 10th. Pakistan Foreign Office made the announcement for the dates of the summit, saying that it has invited the leaders of SARC member states to grace the summit. However, it remains unclear whether Prime Minister Narendra Modi will travel to Pakistan for the summit, given the strain in bilateral ties over the issue of cross-border terrorism. 
Home Minister Rajnath Singh had visited Pakistan earlier this month for the SARC Home Minister's meeting, during which the chill in the ties was evident, while Finance Minister Arun Jaitley skipped the ongoing SARC Finance Minister's meeting and instead sent Economic Affairs Secretary Shakti Kanta Das to represent India at the meet. SARC member countries consist of Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Nepal, the Maldives, Pakistan and Sri Lanka. I would also like to acknowledge the commitment and readiness of the Honourable Ministers who participate in the meeting. I hope we will focus on core issues today and would come up with practical and time-bound recommendations that would be submitted for the consideration of our leaders during the upcoming SARC Summit, which is to be held on 9th and 10th of November in Islamabad. Well, Defence Minister Manohar Parikar has said that uh, the Scorpion submarine data leak is not a matter of big worry. This after the Australian newspaper uploaded a fresh tranche of leaked documents on its website on Friday. Meanwhile, the identity of the whistleblower has been revealed, who has assured that more documents will be released on Monday. Defence Minister Manohar Parikar has played down the Scorpion data leak, saying it is not a big worry as the leaked documents do not include any of the weaponry systems of the submarines. The minister added that the Scorpion submarine has not fully completed the sea trials, which is important to understand how it will work underwater. He, however, said that there are few pockets of concerns as the ministry was assuming the worst-case scenario. DCNS does the proposed, whatever the detail, does not upon, uh, include weapon system as being reported by many. Weapon system to, uh, agreements are with uh, weapon manufacturers and they are separate agreements. Secondly, this, our submarine has so far not done the sea trials completed. Therefore, the most important uh, signature does not form part of the document. And the most important aspect is in many cases, we do our integration through our technical capabilities. The whistleblower behind the Scorpion document leak, however, has asserted that the disk containing thousands of pages of data details the submarine's stealth and warfare capabilities and that it will be handed over to the Australian government on Monday. More than 22,000 pages of uh, top-secret data on the combat capabilities of six highly advanced submarines being built in Mumbai in collaboration with France at a cost of 3.5 billion US dollars were made public by Australia's The Australian Newspaper this week. The Indian Navy has taken up Scorpion document leak matter with the French Directorate General of Armament. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Moving on, now President of Myanmar, Yu Tin Kyo, will embark on a four-day India visit from today to set up a bilateral engagement with a major focus on ensuring better management of the Indo-Myanmar border. This is the first overseas trip by the President after the new government assumed power. Nitin Kyo uh, will be accompanied by his wife and a high-level delegation comprising several key ministers and top officials. The Myanmarese president will arrive in Gaya today where he will visit the famous Mahabodhi Temple, the Archaeological Museum and the Daijokyo Buddhist Temple. From Gaya, he will leave for Agra on Sunday where he will visit the Taj Mahal. On Monday, the Myanmarese president will hold extensive talks with the Prime Minister Narendra Modi during which a host of issues including border management and ways to contain militant activities along the Indo-Myanmar border are likely to figure. Both sides are also likely to discuss ways to boost trade ties. The visit of the Myanmarese president comes days after External Affairs Minister Shishma Swaraj paid a day-long visit to the Southeast Asian country. Well, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has announced plans to set up a task force which will prepare an 
action plan for the upcoming Olympics in 2020, 2024 and 2028. The task force will be responsible for preparing a strategy for sports facilities, training, selection procedures and related matters. India's 118 member contingent won two medals at the recently concluded Rio Olympics. Here are the details. With a poor showing at the Rio Olympic Games, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday announced the setting up of a task force to prepare the roadmap for the next three games. Speaking at a meeting of the Council of Ministers, Modi said the task force will be set up in the next few days. A statement from the Prime Minister's office said the task force will be set up to prepare a comprehensive action plan for effective participation of Indian sportspersons in the next three Olympic Games to be held in 2020, 2024 and 2028. The task force will prepare overall strategy for sports facility, training, selection procedure and other related matters. The task force will comprise of members who are in-house experts as well as foreign experts. The decision comes against the backdrop of India's dismal performance in the Rio Olympics as the country won only one silver and one bronze medal, even after sending its biggest contingent of 118 athletes. India finished 67th in the medals tally. A shuttler PV Sindhu clinched silver while wrestler Sakshi Malik won bronze, sparking an outpouring of national pride and celebrations in India but it was far below the sports ministry's target of 10 medals in Rio. India has never finished high on the medals table, winning just 28 medals from 24 Olympic appearances. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, more deaths have been reported from Bihar due to the floods triggered by heavy rains. The downpour has caused rivers like the Ganga and its tributaries to flow above the danger level in Uttar Pradesh and West Bengal as well. Lakhs of people have been displaced due to rising waters. In Bihar, 14 more people perished in the devastating floods, taking the death toll to 149. Chief Minister Nitish Kumar made an aerial survey of uh, several flood-affected districts. Apart from the Ganga, Son, Gandak, Ghagra and Kosi are all flowing above the danger mark, affecting over 32 lakh people. Over 4 lakh people have been evacuated so far from the 12 flood-affected districts. सरकार के तरफ से जो हो रहा हो रहा ऊपर से भी हम लोग चूरा गोद चना सारा प्रबंध हम लोग किया है in Uttar Pradesh, over 8 lakh people in 28 districts have been hit by the floods, even as fresh spell of rain blashed many parts of the state. Varanasi, Alabad, Ghazipur, and Balia are among the worst hit. Waters of the Ganga and Yamuna are receding at some places, but they remain above the danger mark at several others. जितना आप समझ लीजिए जिंदगी में जितना निर्वाह जिंदगी चलाने के लिए जितना सामग्री जरूरत पड़ती है उतना ही आवश्यकता है यहां पे सब सब नष्ट हो चुका है अब क्या क्या बताएं भोजन पानी पशु के लिए रहने के लिए अगर बरसात माली के दो दिन से रुक गए हैं नहीं वो भी समस्या तमाम था है जो कि एक आपा और अनाज लोग रखे हैं घर में वो भी भीग रहा है in West Bengal, a three-year-old boy died after a kacha house collapsed due to overnight rains in Malda. Ganga is flowing above the danger mark in the district. An estimated 35,000 people in 40 villages have been cut off as the swollen Ganga submerged unprotected areas from the Faraka barrage side. Five relief camps have been set up in the district. <laughs> Floods have claimed 300 lives so far across states in the country. Multiple teams of NDRF have been pressed into service in affected areas for rescue and relief. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, it's time for a short break now, but news and updates will continue on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Elora Caves, an unimaginable and detailed work of art. The finest example of rock cave temple in India with 34 caves.
built by the rulers of the Rashtrakuta dynasty between 350 AD and 1000 AD. Striking sculptures and murals are the hallmark of the caves. The Kailash temple is the largest monolith structure of the world, an impressive 15 feet statue of Buddha seated in two story structure of stupa with all the grace. It took about five centuries to complete the structure made with 200,000 tons of rock. Welcome back, you're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, the Amadi Party has removed Sucha Singh Chotepur from the post of convener of the Punjab unit. The leader is in the spotlight for his alleged involvement in a cash for ticket scandal. The Amadni Party today removed its Punjab chief, Sucha Singh Chotepur, from the post. The party has also formed a panel to probe the allegations of corruption against him. The decision was taken at a meeting of the party's political affairs committee in New Delhi. So, the decision was made that the convener of Sucha Singh Chotepur is removed from Punjab. And a joint committee was made by the Sardar Jarnail Singh and Shri Jasveer Singh Beer, who is our Grievance Committee chairman. These two people have been made by the committee. Sucha Singh Chotepur, convener of the party in Punjab, was allegedly caught taking money in a sting operation. The sting was apparently made by one of the party members. However, Chotepur has alleged that people in the party have conspired against him. One party is being fired, and the people who are my friends are being defended. This is the fact that the people who are changing in Punjab. These are the things that are behind the scenes. This is a big deal. My friends have kept my friends. This is a big deal. 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 Earlier, Aam Aadmi Party National Convener and the party's Punjab Affairs in Charge, Arvind Kejriwal, had apparently refused to meet Chotepur. He had instead asked him to file his clarification before the party's Punjab State Committee. People have given me money, I have given people. So, this is what I'm talking about. I'm going to ask them to ask them. मैं लोकल में ठगी मारी है किसी को लार्ज देता है तब मेरी सीबीआई को इनक्वायरी कराई जाए ये मैं पब्लिक लाइफ दे बेच ये का पैसा भी मेरे वाले निकले जाते मेरे उठाने का ताज़ा है मैं ध्यान दारी जो नाल चालीस साल अमान दारी जो लोकल में सेवा की थी है छोटे पर जो सीनियर लीडर ऑफ़ द पार्टी इन पंजाब ही he also had a long stint with the Congress, Akali Dal and the Ahmadni Party. The Ahmadni Party is expected to pose a tough challenge to the Akali Dal, BJP combined and the Congress in the forthcoming assembly polls next year. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, with the crucial three-day period after the earthquake now over, rescue workers in Italy say that hopes of finding more survivors are almost over as the dead toll now reaches close to 300. A day of national mourning has begun. Flags are due to fly at half-mast across Italy today. While on the one hand, the government battles criticism for failing to prevent deaths after the 2009 earthquake in nearby L'Aquila, it looks at massive reconstruction work that the country now desperately needs. Chiamata dei servizi speciali siamo intervenuti sul borgo antico di Amatrice in seguito al sisma avvenuto la notte dell'altro ieri. Alle 9.30 circa eravamo sul posto insieme al mio cane Sarotti. Abbiamo fatto una ricerca sotto delle macerie. Qui ci hanno detto che forse c'era qualcuno sotto. An Italian dog handler recounting the dramatic and miraculous rescue of 11-year-old young girl beneath the rubble of a collapsed building. Guilia had been buried under the rubble for nearly 15 hours in the quake-hit central town of Amatris. However, after the crucial 72-hour period after the quake now over, finding someone alive from the ruins gets tougher. However, authorities say they will continue the search until they are certain no one is unaccounted for, although aftershocks continue to hamper rescue work. Là dove noi bonifichiamo, 
viene il, la, 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 la casa, l'abitazione, la, la, la struttura viene segnalata, per cui evitiamo altre perdite di tempo. A day of national mourning has begun for the 278 people who died in the powerful earthquake that hit mountainous central regions on Wednesday. Prime Minister Marty Renzi is due to attend state funerals for victims from Arquata, one of the worst hit towns. A state of emergency has been declared in affected areas and 50 million euros in funds pledged for rebuilding. Il fatto di vivere queste ore nelle, nelle lacrime e nell'orgoglio non deve farci dimenticare che noi abbiamo un impegno morale con le donne e gli uomini di quelle comunità. At the moment, desperately needing food and shelter, more than 2,000 Italians are taking refuge in makeshift camps. Abbiamo creato una piccola tendopoli chi non vuole allontanarsi perché il problema è che molta gente non si vuole allontanare dal posto perché ci sono i mezzi, chi ci lavora, chi ha gli animali, perciò è difficile dire vai in un campo attrezzato. As the massive rescue and relief effort continues, questions are being raised on large number of deaths in the area known for decades to be the most seismically hazardous. Prime Minister Renzi announced plans to help the country prepare better and address poor building standards, but said suggestions that the country could easily construct quake-proof buildings were absurd. Bureau report, Rajasabha TV. Well, in some more international news now, United States and Russia failed to achieve any breakthrough towards a new ceasefire in Syria even after nine hours of talks in Geneva. The focus of the meet was to iron out details on how to address ceasefire violations by President Bashar al-Assad's regime as well as the rise of a rebel group linked to the Al-Qaeda that has mingled with opposition groups backed by the U.S. Addressing a joint news conference on Friday, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has said that the talks between the teams from both the countries will continue over the next several days. The meeting marked yet another attempt to find common ground on easing a conflict that has killed at least 2,50,000 people. We don't want to have a deal for the sake of a deal. We want to have something done that is effective and that works for the people of Syria, that makes the region more stable and secure, and that brings us to the table here in Geneva to find a political solution. We are for a united Syria. Uh, we do not support an independent Kurd initiative. Uh, there has been some limited engagement, as everybody knows, with a component of uh, uh, Kurd fighters on a limited basis. and we cooperated very closely with, uh, uh, specific, with Turkey, specifically, uh, to make sure that there was a clear understanding of the rules by which that would, engagement would take place. Here's a roundup of the other uh, international news in World Wrap. The rebel-held city of the Raya near Damascus is being evacuated by government forces. This came after rebel fighters agreed to hand over their weapons and leave. The Raya was among uh, the first cities to report protests against President Bashar al-Assad's government. The city has been besieged without food aid for four years. Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton accused her Republican rival Donald Trump of racism on Friday. Clinton, while delivering a speech in Nevada, said uh, Trump's campaign was built on prejudice and paranoia. Trump has polled poorly with minorities and has been criticized for his proposals on immigration, building a wall along the Mexican border and suspending Muslim immigration to shore up national security. The UN Security Council on Friday warmly welcomed the historic peace deal reached between Colombia's government and FARC rebels and pledged to help ensure the agreement takes hold. The council met behind closed doors two days after the Bogota government and rebel representatives announced they had reached a final peace deal to end decades of conflict. But rebel fighters say that they will retake arms if they feel the government does not comply. And time now to bring you up to speed with some sports news in Sportsbeat. 
The Indo-German tennis pair of Leander Pace and Andre Begemann knocked out top seeds Lukas Kubot and Nenad Zimunic in straight sets to storm into the semi-finals of the ATP Winston Salem Open in the United States. The unseeded Indo-German pair upset the Poland-Serbian combo 6-4, 6-4 in the quarter-final. The duo will now face third seeds Robert Lindstedt and Esamul Haq Qureshi in the semis. Saket Mainini advanced to the final qualifying round at the US Open. Mainini is just one win away from making the singles main draw as he got past USA's Mitchell Kruger with a 7-6-6-4 win in the second round. He will now face Pedja Kristin from Serbia in the next round. South African state prosecutors on Friday failed in their bid to challenge the six-year sentence for murder handed down to Oscar Pistorius. Prosecutors described the Paralympic athlete's punishment for killing his girlfriend Riva Steenkamp in 2013 as shockingly lenient. Judge Tokozil Masipa said that the petition had no reasonable prospect of success. The state now has 21 days to take its case to the Supreme Court of Appeal. Cristiano Ronaldo was named UEFA's best player in Europe for the second time after winning the Champions League and Euro 2016 last season. The Real Madrid forward beat teammate Gareth Bale and Atletico Madrid striker Anton Griezmann in the voting. Ronaldo scored the winning penalty for Real in the Champions League final and captain Portugal to the Euro 2016 glory in July. Britain's Chris Froome remains third in the Volta España as uh, Belgian Jonas Van Genechten won stage 7. Van Genechten sprinted home first in the 158.5 km stage from Mesida to Pueblo de Sanabria with uh, Daniel Benati second and Alejandro Valverde third. Froome was caught up in the crash inside the final kilometre but was awarded the same time as his rivals. And finally, NASA's Juno probe is to make closest pass of Jupiter today. Since the probe arrived in Jupiter's orbit on the 4th of July, this will be the first opportunity for Juno to get so close to the gas giant. The space explorer will come within 2,500 miles of the planet's clouds. With this close encounter, scientists expect the spacecraft to capture the most spectacular images of the planet yet and reveal in unprecedented detail what lies beneath Jupiter's thick blanket of cloud. We leave you with visuals of Juno as it gets ready for snapping first close-up of Jupiter.